All right, testing. One, two, three. Here we go. Let me get this set up real quick. Do, 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 do. All right, testing. One, two, three. All right. Set this up real quick. All righty then. <clears throat> I think we're ready to go. Mm. Okay, we're live. Looks like everything is cool. All right, let's do this. Mm. In the name of my ancestors, Peace forever and, and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. and your snub up seven. I am your soul brother, number one. Well. Glad to see you, glad to see you. If I don't see you now, maybe I, I will be seeing you later. I wanna apologize, but as you know, uh, I'm always tired, especially this week. I had a long uh, Memorial Day uh, weekend week type thing, so I'm tired, but I wanted to speak to us and the show must go on. So if I stumble, if I fall, if I stutter, then just forgive me. I just want to talk. And uh, I, am, I am extremely <laughs> affected by fatigue. Uh, mind you, give me a second here. I want to uh, go to Facebook. I'm on Facebook also, YouTube and Facebook. And uh, I just want to, I will probably be checking my Facebook. I don't want people to come to my Facebook because, because they really don't, they really don't know that I do appear on my Facebook um, right now. But should they find out, I don't want them to think that I am ignoring them. Okay. So I think we are about to to get ready to do this thing here. Man, all this, okay, let me set this thing up again. Okay, all right. <clears throat> well, mm, another hot day. Is it summertime yet? I don't know. Is it still spring? Officially it's still spring, I believe. It's not, not summertime yet. But I can start this video by talking about the spring, summertime. And uh, this would be a pretty nice time to go to the beach. I would not mind taking this lady, Terry. I would take her hand and we, we would go on the beach and uh, walk around and I would muster up the courage. I would say to Terry, could we make love? Now, of course, as soon as I say that, because of the environment that we live in and how we, and how we are raised, you think about making love, love, love. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking this sister and walking on the beach and I would point to the stars. I want to make love to your mind. I want to make love to your brain the same way that we seek physical pleasure. I want to seek pleasure by giving you something to think about. I want to intercourse with her mind. 
I heard Malcolm speak of this in one of his very rare speeches about the relationship between husband and wife and male and female. That of course, we don't mind and we have no problem with physical love, but a husband should also be able to show his wife what they call a spiritual intercourse to show his wife that he's able to take her out from this low place to a higher place. So I would take this sister in an attempt to intercourse with her mind. And when my mind and her mind become one, we want to intercourse with this reality that we have been born into. So we look out into space. And I show her the stars. Many brothers, you may not know this, but women actually operate on a higher plane than we do. It is said that girls mature faster than boys. This should tell us something. So if you want to keep up with her, and that's why most men, when it comes to women, they go for the physical because they don't know how and have not matured in order to deal with her mind where she wants to go. And it's not always to the bedroom. Sometimes she just wants you to show her what you made out of, not just laying her down. Sometimes she's comfortable with just being in your arms and looking at the stars. So Terry, what are we gonna look at when we see the stars? I want you to see and look at that universe that surrounds us. In religious teaching, it always talking about going to heaven and looking upward. The heavens, the stars, it is an obsession with going to heaven. It's an obsession with going from a lower level to a higher plane. Mm. So we looking at the stars. What you're looking for, you should notice when you look out into the heavens. And this is a key qualification that we need to understand in order for us as the subject that I've chosen for these few minutes to experience and to evolve as the human beings, your potential is to be God. I don't like really that word God. I want to rather say to reach your fullest potential and your fullest potential would be compared to what you call as a God. But in order to become that God, you must first humble yourself to that which is greater than yourself. And right now at this time, the heavens and that which is out there is much greater because you can only look, you can't touch. And when we look at the stars, we are made to know, and you should know, when you place yourself among these stars, how else can you be but humble? I don't care how many records you sell. I don't care how many subscribers you have. I don't care if you're the president or the CEO, whoever you think you are, You, we are nothing but a drop of, less than a drop of sand compared to the universe. And maybe if you humble yourself, maybe the human being might be able to get a chance to actually touch it. Well, this is something that I would like to place in her mind and give her something to think about. Because the woman or the female, regardless to your race, she is the key to human advancement. When you treat a woman low, 
you're going to stay low. But when you begin to treat her and put her in a high place, she will produce babies and future generations that can only go one way, and that's up. And you'll be on your way to the heaven described in your Bible. That's the reality of looking at it. Not going to heaven after you die and your spirit. No, it is the species. It is the people, this human life form that right now, because of racism and other divisional things among us, we have been stunted. Our, our evolution has been uh, yeah, stunted, hindered. You are, you are at a stop sign. Something is keeping you back. And the number one thing is that you don't treat the woman. She's the only way that the human being can continue to evolve and move forward. When she moves slow, human advancement moves slow. You say, well, how is that possible? What you talking about? We got cars, we got computers, we got cell phones, we got all these different things, and they all have flaw. They create poison. They create things that is detrimental to your life instead of being beneficial to your life. You can talk on the phone, use a computer. All these things are at our disposal, but at a price of our death. So as we advance, so does the cancer rate. So as we advance, so does the sickness. As we advance, so is the wars and the rape and the murders and the violence. Because that is done against her. Violence is against her. The rape is against her. She is the key to all of it. And then we, we get so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm at a loss of words. We admire people we call genius, these geniuses. Why should you admire the genius? When all of us should be that. All of us should be a genius. All of us should have high IQ. The problem is she is not treated right. And we don't treat ourselves high. So we produce something that is on a low functioning level. So we function, as some of y'all say, on a with low chakra. That's how we function. You treat this woman, you treat this woman on a high level, and you would advance. But for the last few thousand years, this male has come into power, and he has treated this woman in America and all over this earth terrible. And he is happy with the, the now and then children that bring us advancement when we should be advancing. All of us are what you call gods. There should not be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Your scriptures in the Bible say, ye all are gods. We are taught in religious scriptures. All of us are God. So there's nothing amazing about what these people do when all of us have the potential, but we have been denied the right because we mistreat that which can bring God unto this reality. You and I, in religious teachings, we are called children of God. For the last how many years? At least 2,000 years or more. We are the children of God. When we know that you cannot stay a, a child forever, sooner or later, you got to grow up. You're still a child. And when you when you begin to age, oh, oh man, when you begin to age physically, but your mind stays like a child. They used to call that mental retardation. So all these religious people, y'all believers in God, 
I don't want to make mockery of you. I don't want to make fun of you. But you're suffering from mental retardation because physically you are made in the image of God and you look like a your, your, your father or whatever. But you still call yourself and operate as a child begging your father for things that you should be grown enough to do for yourself. If God can raise the dead to life, you should be able to do it. If God can make a tree, you should be able to do it. If you believe God can do those things, because your scripture says, ye all are gods. You are unable to do nothing except keep begging your daddy, can I get $5? Could you put gas in my car? Will you help me? That's what prayer is. Prayer is a form of begging, asking. And you are supposed to be grown. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years, you still a child of God. When are you going to grow up? And before you can even begin to try to grow up, you're a dead man. You're a dead woman. How did you die? Why did you die? You died as a child of God. Not as a God, but as a child of God. You died suffering from mental retardation. Why can't you grow up? What's the problem? Ye all are gods. Hmm. Have you noticed? In the fictional world, this is the fictional world. But have you noticed when we talk about Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, the Incredible Hulk, the Mighty Thor? What religion do they belong to? Superheroes never have a religion. Why is that? Bruce Wayne is not a Christian. He's not a Muslim. They never say. Out of all the superheroes, nobody has a religion. Nobody has a God. Why is that? Of course, this is fiction, y'all. This is fiction. There's no such thing as Batman and Superman, Spider-Man. They never claim God. They never claim religion. They don't claim spirituality. Unless you're Dr. Strange. <laughs> they don't never do that. Why? Because they are operating on a God level. You don't impress me, I can fly. You don't impress me, I got, I have X-ray vision and heat vision. I can run super fast. I'm a God too. That's why, that's why you don't hear superheroes talk about, well, I hope God do this and, 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 and God do that. They don't depend on God. You never see the superheroes Holler and cry for God. Because they are God. In the future. Again, this is fiction. But in the future. Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek. Battlestar Galactica. You never hear them talk about God. Or religion or spirituality. Why is this? Because they are God. You need all that stuff because you are a beggar and you are praying to a God. Gods don't pray and worship and serve God. We all are God. Ye all are gods. So why should I serve you? I'm a God just like you are. Again, fiction. You have the mighty Thor. Mighty Thor, his father is Odin. They live in Asgard. All of them are gods. Odin, I guess he would be like one of the top gods, but they all are gods with their own, their own special type of powers. Ye all are gods. What, what is stopping you? What is hindering you from become from being, growing from or evolving from a child of God to a God? Hmm. But you have that potential. I'm going to show you. Well, I told you one of the reasons, the reason why we cannot reach our godlike potential is that the male does not treat this woman right. 
I know some of you don't like that. You don't want to hear that. Well, we've been in the world of men for a long time. Where is it? And you're still a child of God. Men have you praying to find some God. Men, under the men doing what they do, you're still a child of God for the last three, four, five thousand years. Under the rule of men, under the care of men, you have yet to grow up. And that's because you don't have her. She's the key to you becoming God, for her to become God, for the human being to become God, regardless of race. Mm. This environment in America and around the world we live in a funky environment that does nothing to feed the potential of the human being to evolve from just being an ordinary human being to that which we call God. Racism, drugs, alcohol, this obsession with praying to some gods and spirituality is messes with your it's messing with your potential. This environment, bad food, your brain cannot form properly. You're not on her breast. Her breast is not meant for men to play with. Her breast was designed for those babies to get proper nourishment. So your brain can form properly. We don't have proper brain formulation. That's why we don't think worth a damn. I talk to people all the time. They don't think worth nothing. I watch people driving their cars. They can't think and react properly. Being raised on Similac, infamil, instead of her love and her real milk. How are you going to become, how are you going to become God? How are you going to reach your potential when you're not formed properly? Ye all are gods. Are y'all following me here? There's a brother <clears throat> that talks about the natural lifestyle that men should live is a primitive type lifestyle. He says that it is natural and normal for us to be simple, like primitive people. And that is that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But that was part of our past. That was part of our evolutionary period as we begin to grow and evolve. It is not meant for us to stay like that. And I'm going to show you why. The reason why we cannot stay like that, the way we cannot, the reason why we cannot stay primitive, as they call it, there's nothing wrong with that primitive lifestyle. There's nothing wrong with it. But not, but it's something wrong for it when it comes to us as human beings. We're not supposed to stay that way. And the reason why we can't stay that way is because we have one of the greatest machines. We have the greatest organic machine ever that we know about. And that is the human brain. And the human brain is not going to allow it. It's not going to allow it. When you are a baby, when you are a child, your brain makes you curious. You come into this unknown world and you and babies want to touch, they want to reach, they want to touch, they want to taste, they want to feel. Curious about their environment. That's how you are when you're a child. Soon as the baby is ready to crawl, the baby is out exploring. 
Who are you? What is that? What that tastes like? What that look like? That's the brain. I want, I want to know. I want to know. Even animals, they just don't stay the same. That's why you have different species of birds and reptiles and mammals all over the planet. Because somewhere they started in one place, but then they began to spread. And they began to explore. They were like that baby. I saw a monkey, a chimpanzee, one of these stories. And the chimpanzee was eating ants. And of course, you know, the chimpanzee was picking the, you know how little small ants are. And they eating the ant. And, and the monkey was like, this is a bunch of bull. So the monkey, the chimpanzee, took a stick and put the stick down into the ant's hole. And the ants saw the stick as a threat and they began to attack the stick and they start clinging on and biting the stick. Then the monkey pulled the stick out. Once it got, once the stick was full of ants, the chimpanzee pulled the stick out of the hole, had a whole lot of ants at one time. Yep. See, animals using their brain. You and I, our brains are way beyond the functioning power of that chimpanzee. But it goes to show you that it's not meant for an animal or even insects to stay where they came from. So at one time, we was living, like you say, the primitive life. But we're not to stay that way. Some of us can do that for the next 10,000 years. But the human being, your brain will not allow, your potential to become God is not going to allow you to sit around and make a campfire and shoot buffalo with a bow and arrows. Your brain is not going to do that because your potential is higher than that. Your brain seeks to know. It's curious. I want to know. So as the human being evolved, you see, the human being is on land. Then the human being see all this water. Wow, look at all that water. Now, a great majority, they see the water and they turn back around. They're not going to mess with that. But there are many of us, there's something in the human dynamic. What's out there? I want to know. And they find a way to go out there. They don't know what's out there. And the people that's left behind, you gonna die. They scared. That's, that's the unknown. They scared. But clearly, somebody made something, a raft or a boat, and they got on that ocean. Now, I'm gonna tell you personally, I would not be one of the ones to get on a raft or a boat and go out in all that water. I'm, me, I would be left behind. I'd be on land shooting a shooting a uh, bird in a tree for 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 uh for dinner i'm not going to do that but as clearly as you can see the human being is not going to do it they the your brain calls you to want to know explore touch and taste i want to know the human being has explored the deserts the the jungles Wherever the cold, we want to go, we go. You just cannot stay in one state. Our brain causes us to move. And so now the final frontier is outer space. Take her on the beach so we can look at the stars. And that's what the Bible is. Is talking about going to heaven, going out into the, into the stars, becoming God. You're going to leave this earthly plane. That's going to heaven in a real sense. 
not dying and your spirit flying and turn into a ball of gas and all this stuff y'all talking about. It is simply the human being evolving, reaching your potential. And your potential is to become God because once you leave this earthly plane and you begin to explore, go where no man has ever gone before. And you see things. You're no longer going to be talking about praying to God. You're no longer going to be worshiping some God. You have become God. You can go anywhere in the universe you want to go. The human being has the capability to even change your environment. So you go where it's cold and you make it warm and, and hot so that you can live there. When you go into the jungle and you learn how to change the environment. If it's hot, you know how to make it cool so that you can live. So you reach your potential where you can actually go out into space and find another planet. If that planet is good for us, we can live there. But even if it's not, we know how to go there and build stuff and make it where we can live on it. That's your potential. But when you live on a low level, woo, when you live on a low level, a low functioning level, a detrimental level, that's a sign of being in the grave. Because when you're in the grave, there is no up. When you're in the grave, it's only there on the low. There is no going high unless somebody pick you up, up out of that grave. Somebody that is alive and on the high pick you up, up out of the grave. So like the Quran teach in the Muslim belief system, when you so low and wicked before Allah destroys a people, Allah gives us a peak at the heavens. And right now, that's all that you're getting right now it's just a peak. They send a little satellites out and you get your telescope and you can look. You can look, but you can't touch. You still here and can't go no further. You can imagine. And they keep telling this story. We went to the moon. Really? When people went to the jungle, they never stopped going. Once they went to the jungle, they kept going. When they went into the ocean, they kept going. Wherever men explore and find, they keep going. If you went out in space like they claim, why you stop? Why you stop going to the moon? That could be your second home. The problem is <laughs> you don't treat this woman right. You're not evolving like you should. You're not reaching your potential. And at the rate that you're going, you're going to destroy yourself. So like the Quran says, I'm just going to give you a peek and tease you. You can look, but you can't touch. Living in this environment, we cannot reach our potential because we have so many things clogging up your brain. You don't have good food. You're not drinking her milk. We're fighting back and forth about racism religious differences, we're greedy, we are selfish, we're arrogant, we have so many things that's, this is something that religion is supposed to, to cure. Religion is supposed to help you stop being greedy, nasty, make you humble, because if you're not humble, if you don't cleanse yourself, that's why it says in scripture, you must be baptized, be cleaned in the water. Get yourself clean. You must be purified. You got to clean all this up because our brain, we cannot reach our potential unless your brain is functioning properly. But we got all this stuff clogging up our brain. So we have many human beings going to the grave as a drunk, as a pedophile, as a dope fiend, as a murderer, 
so many things. Who knows the real potential of that person if their minds was not clogged up, if they was not living in an environment that was not, I know the word I want, I want to use, but it's not good. It cannot, it does not, does nothing to feed your potential. Ye are all God. You are God. In that sense. And I guarantee you, once you begin to grow into your God self, all these religions will disappear. Because that God don't impress you no more. Look what I can do. Look where I'm at. And that God, these gods that we have right now, ain't took you, and you know it, ain't took you nowhere. The only thing these gods that y'all have make you feel good, that's all. And you go to church and you hoop and you holler, hey, la, 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 oh, Lord, oh, boy, you sing and you dance and, and you shalot and all this stuff. But it ain't, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing really happening. It's just pretend stuff. It's just like when you want to show what you learn in dance class to your parent. You just want to show the father what you can do. That's all. Because you're still a, a child. But see, when you get grown, you love your mother, you love your father, but they don't, they don't no longer impress you no more, really. Because see, you become an adult too. You have your children too. I love your mama, love your dad, but I'm grown. I got I have children of my own. So when you become a god yourself, how can Allah, how can Yahweh, how can Yahshua, how can Jesus, how can any of these? Matter of fact, that's what Jesus wants for you. Jesus wants you to become a god. You are a child of God, but you're stifled, you're hindered. You cannot reach your fullest potential because you're caught up in all this confused madness. That's why. I have been told, somebody told me one time, you think you're so damn smart and blah, blah. Who you think you're? You think you God? Yes. Yes. That's what I was taught. That's what you told me I am. I am a God. We are God. You're going to get angry at me because I am I am actually expressing my power of being a God. And the power is coming from here. And you're going to get angry because I'm growing up and you're still in kindergarten. I'm going into high school. You're still in kindergarten. And that's what it's about. It is not for us to stay primitive. It is, it is for us to explore all of that that's out there and go to heaven. Just like your Bible says, going to heaven. We are to know what's all out there. Because if it was, if it was not meant for us to know, your brain could not comprehend it. The deer cannot comprehend our, what's out in outer space. Your dog Spot can't comprehend. Their brain don't function on our level. Not all of us can go and do that. But the human species, the human being has the potential and can. And if you don't, and if you allow yourself to evolve and stop smoking weed and drinking, and sucking other things, <laughs> you know, living on this low plane. Not in our lifetime, probably, but we can put our babies, the future generations, on a path. They will go where no man has ever gone before. And the fictional Star Trek, the fictional Star Wars, will no longer be fictional it would become our reality 
just like many things that was in comic books years ago was nothing but fiction we are actually living those things right now they are reality why because of the brain who knows what this brain is capable of doing scientists say we use less than 10 percent so if we only use less 10 percent or less what else what can our brain do for us a reefer smoker will never know. A porn addict will never know. This is a script to teach you that you have to be a righteous person. Get your mind right. And when you get your mind right, things will begin to go right. And you begin to evolve and express your fullest potential. And your fullest potential is to become that which you pray to, which is a God. Just like somebody, no, just like Elijah Muhammad always say in his book, take it or let it alone. <laughs> With that said, I, I didn't want to keep us a long time. I just hope that I, I made our point and I hope that uh I hope I'm I hope that I, I am on time. I think I am. I think I am. Like I said, we are damaged goods. We are messed up. But if we begin to straighten up this airplane and fly right, regardless to your race, the human being got a seat waiting out there for you to sit. And just like in Christian religion, it talks about you will sit right next to God in heaven. There you go. There you go. I thank you so much for joining me. Thank those. Uh, wow, I didn't get nobody in the chat room tonight. Oh, well. <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah, they wanted me to be by, they wanted me to be by myself. I guess that's because of the, the topic. You know, we're talking about gods. They want to talk about racism. I hate white people. I hate Negroes. They, that's the kind of stuff they, they <laughs> that's the type of stuff they want to talk about instead of <laughs> what can we do to reach our potential to be a human being and evolve from a human being to that which we call God. That's boring. They want to talk about who they hate, why we can't get along, whatever. Let me drink some beer. Who, who who I'm going to bang tonight, you know, that kind of crap. It's sad. That's the reason why <laughs> you cannot reach your, your potential as a God. Hey, what's up, Brother Leon? I ain't seen you in a little while. How's the wife and the family? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm glad that you're here. I, I I know you you're not you're not gonna never let me down, brother Leon. You and your you and your family. Um. So, I'm really done tonight, and uh, I was real tired. But you know how it is when uh when I get started, like they say in religion, the the, the the spirit just hits you, and uh, I'm wide awake right now. And uh, yeah, I think it was a good talk. Let's talk about this. And hopefully tomorrow, whoo, it's hard to say tomorrow. Uh, I might have to start late. It's according to how things go. Um, I want to talk about religious hocus pocus ain't black liberation. Uh, join me tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah. Join me tomorrow, 3 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, we're going to talk about religious hocus pocus. And that's probably a, uh, a subject. Some folks, if they not, if they don't uh, uh, show up tomorrow, they're going to talk about it because it's people that I might have to talk about that <laughs> it might make some folks upset. Well, I, I have to talk. I have to say I have to represent the truth. So um, 
I'm willing to accept the consequences, even if telling the truth is uh, means I die. So what? I'm gonna die from something. So who cares? Who cares? But again, oh, Mims is in the house. Mims, we are going to have. We got to set up a an open discussion. I've been going back and forth with uh, the common sense guy, and you know. <clears throat> It's pretty good. I hope that he don't take things too serious. But uh, I have my position, and he has his position, and uh, that's just the way that it is. That's just the way it is. Um, when when those positions, as long as you can disagree and be civil with, with people, that's cool. But when disagreement turns into violence, it's better for us to separate. And right now, that's the problem. This disagreement turns into hatred, it turns into division, and it turns into violence. It's best that we don't, we separate. Well, Mills, this, this is my, uh, this is what I always say. We can always agree to disagree. If, if I think that you have, have a point, I would do that, but I normally don't agree to disagree. I stand on mine, unless you can show me that I'm incorrect for real. I don't like that we agree to disagree. And the reason why I don't like saying that is because there might be some type of potential where you think that I might agree with you and I don't, and we'll never probably agree with what you're talking about. <laughs> but, uh. I know things can get heated, but again, uh, some people claim they want to understand, but they really don't. They have an agenda. They already have a belief, and that's what they're going to stand on. They really are not looking for understanding. And my back and forth with the common sense guy, there is no understanding. He has a belief system. There's something that he already believes in, and he's going to stand on that. And I don't have a belief system. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know this from experience, and I know the history of soul people in this country. Then and now, at least to say my own personal experience, dealing with these devils for 10 years. And you know, he told me he wants to be a psychiatrist. Now, y'all know how I feel about psychiatry, what I went through. <laughs> and I don't like psychiatrists. Matter of fact, I can tell you, I hate psychiatrists, regardless to your race. That's a fake. That's a fake discipline. One of the, one of the poorest college degrees that you can get is psychiatry, psychology. Nobody respects that stuff. Even in the DSM, it says in the DSM, which is the Bible for psychologists and psychiatry. It says they don't know what causes mental illness. But they can give medicine for something they don't know what caused. It's a, it's a hoax. It's a bunch of bull, a bunch of bull malarkey. <laughs> uh, that's a subject in, in, in and of itself. But again, shouts out to Mims, Brother Leon in the chat room, to all those who are listening, and to all those who will listen later on. I thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Hopefully, we will be talking again tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. The subject is religious hocus pocus ain't black liberation. And I know I probably pissed some people off, but oh well. That's how it goes. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening. And uh, jot down your comments, share, subscribe. You can copy this video, put it on your channel. I don't, I don't care. Uh, always. I don't trip off stuff like that. And uh, yeah. And of course, now. Now I know you're not going to forget. And I know I'm not going to forget. We are on this campaign. Let our people know about taking control of a state in Mississippi. Are y'all helping me? Brother Lee, are you helping me do this? Sprint Mills, is you, are you helping me do this? 
We need to tell our people and start the discussion. How are we going to take control of the state of Mississippi or whatever state we choose? We need to do this. And I guarantee you, it's the only real solution for our problem. It's the beginning of a brand new reality and destiny for us. We just don't know. You just don't understand the benefits and all the different doors that will open if you do this. It's complex. It'll take a lot. But once you accomplish this, woo, man, folks just can't comprehend. But if you was God, if you was elevating yourself to the potential, to your potential of being a God, what I'm talking about ain't nothing because your potential is out of the stars. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you later, Terry and Envo. Thank you for listening. And uh, again, thanks for everybody being here with me. I am Audi 5000, as important. Our brother, Don Cornelius, always said, I wish us love, peace, and soul.